Welcome to the deep dive. We take complex stuff, break it down, and hopefully give you some real clarity and insight. Today, we're diving into something that's been a major global health issue for, gosh, over 40 years now, HIV. If you think back to uh, June 1981, there were these first reports, really chilling from the CDC in the US. Five young gay men had this really unusual pneumonia. And the scary part was it was caused by something usually totally harmless. And then, well, it just exploded. More cases spreading fast, affecting everyone, all sexualities, all genders. People were getting severely sick. Their immune systems just weren't working. Weight loss, fevers, sores. And it was fatal. Scientists were scrambling. Yeah, it was a genuine medical mystery unfolding in real time, and the pressure was immense. By 83, though, they'd figured it out. Mm -hmm. It was the human immunodeficiency virus, yeah. HIV. And, you know, while treatments now are, frankly, amazing, the problem hasn't gone away, not by a long shot. We're still seeing over 6,000 yeah. new infections every day worldwide, and people are still dying. Yeah. It's a really stark reminder, isn't it, that progress doesn't mean victory yet. And for 40 years, scientists have been trying, really trying to get a vaccine with, let's be honest, not much success. But maybe that's changing. Our sources are talking about this new vaccine. Apparently, it showed a 97% success rate in uh, getting the right kind of immune cells activated, the ones you actually need. Which is potentially huge news. Exactly. So that's our mission for this deep dive. We want to unpack how HIV actually infects you, understand why vaccines have failed so far, those big hurdles, and then really get into the nuts and bolts of this new approach, this potential breakthrough. The aim is to give you a clear, concise picture, turn all that data into something you can really grasp. And what's helpful here, I think, is looking at it through the lens of resources like um, the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. Mm -hmm. They focus on the practical side, testing, awareness. It helps ground this complex science in the real world. Right. Okay, so to really get why this new vaccine is such a big deal, let's quickly go over how HIV actually works. Most people know HIV, the virus, leads to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. That's the basics, yes. And the transmission, uh, the sources are clear, it's mostly through sharing needles for drug use or unprotected sex. So once the virus gets into the bloodstream, that's where it gets clever, right? How does it actually attack our immune system? It's uh, quite insidious, actually. HIV doesn't just randomly infect cells. It specifically goes after T cells. T cells are crucial. Think of them like uh, the conductors of your immune orchestra. They coordinate the defense. So HIV gets inside a T cell. Then it basically hijacks the cell's own machinery, its goal, to copy its own genetic info and then stitch that right into the T cell's DNA, our DNA. Wow. Okay, so it literally becomes part of our own genetic code. And that's the nasty mechanism you were talking about, that hiding trick. Exactly. Because once it's integrated into the host DNA, the virus can just go silent, dormant, <laughs> for potentially a very long time. And the really insidious part is our immune system can't see it then. It's completely hidden inside our own cells. But then maybe years later, something triggers it. It wakes up, mm. starts making copies of itself, assembling new virus particles. And then these burst out and go infect more T cells. The cycle starts again. And this whole process, the silent phase, can take years. The person mm. might feel perfectly fine, have no idea they're infected. So it's working away in secret, undermining the immune system's command structure bit by bit until enough T cells are gone, either infected or destroyed. And that's when AIDS can develop. And the symptoms... They sound awful. They are. Serious weight loss, fevers that won't quit, skin rashes, sometimes white patches in the mouth. But the real danger is the immune system collapse when it's that weak. Microorganisms that are normally completely harmless can cause severe life-threatening infections. We call those opportunistic infections. And often, that's ultimately what proves fatal. It's a grim picture. But thankfully, we do have treatments now that have made a huge difference. It's not the death sentence it once was, but there's a catch. There is. Modern treatments, uh, an antiretroviral therapy or RT, they're very effective. They keep the amount of active virus in the blood extremely low. Yeah. People can live long, relatively healthy lives with HIV if they have access to these drugs. But that's the key phrase. If they have access. Globally, millions don't. And that huge gap is precisely why we still desperately need a vaccine, something accessible to everyone. Which brings us right back to that big question. 40 years of research, billions invested. Why hasn't there been an effective HIV vaccine? I mean, we have vaccines for so many other things. Why is HIV so different? It really is fundamentally different in how it behaves compared to viruses we can vaccinate against easily. OK, walk us through that. How do normal vaccines work, the classical ones, and why does that approach fail with HIV? So typically with a classical vaccine, we inject either a weakened or killed virus, or maybe just pieces of it, like proteins from its surface. 
your immune system sees these as foreign mounts of defense. And crucially, immune cells called B cells start making antibodies. Antibodies are like little tags. They recognize specific parts of the virus, usual proteins on the surface, we call those antigens, and latch on. After the vaccination, you have memory B cells ready to pump out those antibodies. If the real virus ever shows up, you're immune. Works great for measles, polio. But not HIV. So reason number one, why don't we make those antibodies easily against HIV? What's happening on its surface? The first major problem is that the surface of HIV is covered in sugars. It's like it's wearing this dense sugar coat. And this coat effectively hides, or demasks as some scientists say, the actual viral proteins underneath. So your immune system, your B cells, they just can't get a good look at the protein targets they need to make antibodies against. If they can't see the target properly, no effective antibodies get made. No right. classical immunity. Okay, so it cloaks itself in sugar. But let's say, hypothetically, the immune system could see through that. There's another huge problem, right? The mutations. Oh, absolutely. That's the second massive hurdle. HIV is incredibly diverse because it mutates very rapidly. Yeah. Every time it copies itself, there's a high chance the new copies will be slightly different genetically. Which means even within one person, the virus population becomes really varied over time. And between different people, it's even more different. So there isn't just one HIV. Each case is almost like its own unique strain constantly shifting. That sounds like a nightmare for vaccine developers. It is, because a classical vaccine is usually designed against one specific version or maybe a few versions of a virus. With HIV's diversity, even if a vaccine worked against the strain you were initially exposed to, it might not work against the slightly different versions that pop up later or the vastly different ones circulating in the population. It's like trying to shoot a target that's constantly changing shape and color. And that really explains why most clinical trials failed or had very limited success. Remember that 2009 trial? Yeah, you mentioned it, a 31% reduction in risk. Right, which sounded okay initially, but that protection faded after only about a year. The virus just adapted. It felt like we were always one step behind. It really highlights the frustration. Decades of work hitting these brick walls. But here's where it gets interesting. This very ability to mutate its greatest strength might actually hide a weakness, a fatal flaw. How can its mutation be turned against it? It's a really clever shift in thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, HIV mutates fast to escape the immune system, but it turns out it can't just mutate randomly everywhere. Right. There are certain parts of its surface proteins that are absolutely essential for the virus's structure, its basic shape. If those specific spots mutate, the whole virus particle could basically just fall apart. It would be non-functional, mm -hmm. fatal for the virus. Ah, so those parts have to stay the same. They're conserved across different strains, different people, because the virus literally can't survive if they change. That's the breakthrough, finding the stable target after all this time, the Achilles heel. Precisely. And that discovery paved the way for this new vaccine strategy. Over the last decade or so, scientists started finding these special antibodies in some HIV patients. They're called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs for short. And what makes them special is that they do recognize and bind to these conserved, unchanging regions on the virus surface. Because they target these stable spots, they can neutralize a whole wide range of different HIV variants. So these are the super antibodies we need. Okay, so scientists found these BNABs, figured out exactly where they bind on those conserved regions, and then they could design antigens, the vaccine components that mimic those exact spots, to teach the body to make its own BNABs. That's the core idea. Use those conserved regions as the template for the vaccine antigen. But you said these BNABs were found in some patients. Sounds like they're not common. What's the catch? Ah, uh, yes, the catch. They are incredibly rare. That's why it took so long to even find them. It turns out only about uh, one in every million B cells in our body has the potential to develop into a cell that makes these powerful BNABs. One in a million? Yeah. Our immune system just isn't naturally set up to produce them easily. Okay, so that's the challenge. How do you specifically trigger that one in a million cell? You can't just hope it bumps into the vaccine antigen by chance. That needs a new approach. It absolutely does. And that's where this technique called germline targeting comes in. It's quite sophisticated. Essentially, they design the vaccine antigen very precisely, like a specific key. Mm. This key is designed to fit only into the lock found on the surface of those very rare precursor B cells, the germline cells, that have the potential to mature and produce BNABs. So instead of a general call out to the immune system, it's a highly targeted delivery, hmm. specifically activating those right rare cells and guiding them down the path to becoming BNAM producers. That is genuinely ingenious, like sending a special delivery invitation only to the VIP immune cells you need. OK, so 
The big moment. Did it work? The phase one trial. They tested it in 48 healthy volunteers. And the results, well, they were very encouraging. A real milestone. First off, safety, which is always paramount in phase one, the vaccine seemed safe. No serious side effects were reported. But the really exciting part was the efficacy in terms of the immune response. Broadly neutralizing antibodies, or at least the precursor cells needed to make them, were detected in 97% of the participants. 97%? That is... Wow. After 40 years of struggling to even get the right kind of immune response started, this seems to reliably wake up those rare, crucial cells in almost everyone they tested. That feels like a massive step. Now, obviously, like you said, finding the antibodies is one thing. We still need to know if it actually protects people from getting HIV, right? That's the crucial next step, yes. Mm -hmm. This phase one trial showed the vaccine can elicit the type of response we think is needed. It's proof of principle. But it doesn't yet prove protection against infection. Right. So looking forward, it's still early days, relatively speaking. We need bigger trials, phase two, phase three, to really see if this translates into real world protection for the population. But still... What a significant glimmer of hope. Absolutely. And while we wait for that science to unfold, it's so important for you listening now to remember what we can do today. Prevention is still key, and knowing your HIV status is absolutely fundamental. And this is where, again, resources like the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast offer practical advice. They really highlight HIV RNA testing because it's the earliest, most accurate way to detect the virus, sometimes within just 7 to 10 days of exposure. Knowing that, Having that information empowers you to take care of your health right now. That remains our first line of defense. That's a really vital point. Science is making incredible strides, but personal awareness, knowing your status, taking precautions, it's power we all have right now. So we've covered the history, the immense challenges, this amazing new strategy, exploiting HIV's own weakness. It really leaves you wondering, doesn't it? Could this new approach, this germline targeting vaccine, finally be the breakthrough that turns the tide against HIV for good? What do you think? 